Good evening. So the first video I ever uploaded on this channel was 10 cool things to do with CS Timer. And much to my surprise, a lot of people liked that video, including Reddit user Topitz, one of the moderators of the Cuber subreddit. And he left a comment on the Reddit post I made about the video that basically gave me enough material to make a whole part two. So that's what this is. So big thanks to him because most of the information in this video is from him. So the first thing I'm going to show you guys is the session manager, which is honestly kind of hidden. Like for a while, I didn't know it existed. So over here, uh, this button where you can change your session here, this word session right next to it is actually something you can click on and it brings up the session manager and you can use the session manager to uh, manage your sessions. So you can see here that this presents a lot of information about your sessions here. So you've got the name of the sessions. You've got the number of solves in those sessions, the date they were last modified, and the scramble type, and this P number, this is a little confusing to me, but it's actually the number of segments the timer counts. So you see I have this segmented thing for timing my splits, like I showed in the part one of this video. I have four splits in the timer, so it shows uh, number four here. And then you can use these arrows to sort of reorder them, and that'll also change the order in this list over here here. And the most useful part is this OP thing, which I think means operate. So you can click on this and you'll have a whole bunch of options. Uh, if you click on the session you have selected, so you can select different sessions by clicking on them here. You can get the session you have selected and click on the operate thing here. And you have a few options. You can rename it. So I can uh, rename my session to uh, that, which I will not. Or you can create a new session, which uh, basically just makes a copy of that session, but with no solves in it. And you can split it. So this just uh, takes the last whatever number you set here. So the last 100 solves, I guess, and makes them their own new session. So you see now I have a second session with 100 solves and it's my last 100 solves. You can also delete it, which I don't want to do. And if you click on one that's not selected, you also have the option to merge, which will merge the session you clicked on with your current active session. So if I select the second one, with the only 100 solves in it, I can put them back in the main one by clicking merge and then it'll merge all times in the session you have selected to the end of the session you are merging. So I click that and now the session is back to the way it was before. And then you can sort. I never realized this, so I'm actually finding this out right now. What does this do? Oh Lord, what does this do? What just happened? <laughs> I am so confused. All right, whatever. Let me look up what the hell this does. CS timer session. Great, it says nothing about it on the wiki. So we're just not gonna know what sort does. If you know, leave it in the comments, or if I find out, I will also leave it in the comments. And then lastly, you can export sessions as CSV files, which I'm not entirely sure what those are used for, but if you want to do that, that's there. But uh, yeah, that's the session manager. So next up on my list is some interesting scrambles that there are here. So normally you just have the uh, WCA scrambles and then you can choose from all the different WCA events. But if you click on this drop down menu, you have a whole bunch of things. So uh, firstly, you can click input and you can just type pretty much any scrambles you want in case you want to like use scrambles from a competition or so, I don't know. Just in case you want to input your own scrambles. Also, there are things for non-WCA puzzles like um, gear cubes, uh, UFOs, or other, what is other? Face turning octahedron. All right. Here are some really cool ones. So three by three subsets. You have all these different gens, or you can have half turns only, which is useful for that one JPerm video that came out recently. And then you've got jokes, like one by one scrambles. and. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's that? Did you catch that? I'm scrolling through the scrambles by just clicking on the scramble instead of clicking here. Uh, that's not something that's on by default. If you want to be able to do that, you can go over to your settings over here and then go to scramble and then action when clicking scramble. By default, it's set to none, but you can have it set to copy the scramble or go to the next scramble. So to copy it, 
just click here, scramble copied. And then we can paste it and great, we can Google that. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So this next one, I'm about to blow your mind. So you see these little shaded things in the corner of every panel? Yeah, watch this. Boom, yeah, oh yeah, check that sh Yeah, I, I don't know why this is a thing. I don't know what this is useful for. Maybe I guess so you don't accidentally click on things or maybe it's to save a few pixels of screen real estate. I don't know, but it's cool and it makes things look cleaner. So there you go. That's, that's, uh, that's those things. All right, so this one is pretty useful if you want a little bit more precision in your time. So with things like two by two, you sometimes get solves that are under one second or like that are one point something seconds. I don't because I'm not good at two by two. And that thing is having an extra decimal place here. So you can enable that by going to your settings, clicking global, use milliseconds. And for some reason it says it's not checked when I have it enabled here. All right. Yeah. And also you can click the little checkbox over here if you only want it in certain sessions. Like I don't need milliseconds for like four by four times, you know? And then in part one of this video, one of the things I showed you was how to go to typing mode. So I showed you go up here, you click timer, click typing. Nah, screw that. You just have to press control, alt, T and then boom, you're in standard timing mode. If you want typing mode, you go control alt I. Anyways, yeah, you can change your input mode and it's control alt T for timing, control alt I if you want to input with typing, that's how I remember it. And then control alt S to use a stack map. And there's also control alt G if you have a Bluetooth cube and there's control alt V to use a virtual cube, which not entirely sure how the virtual cube works yet. Maybe part three? I don't know. But what I do know is I love me some keyboard shortcuts. So a useful keyboard shortcut is control two. And that adds a plus two. You see that change the time to a plus two. Then you can click control one to change it back or control three for a DNF. So control two is plus two. That's pretty easy to remember. Control three is a DNF and that's the order that the buttons are down here. So for this one, according to Toppets, who is the one who told me about this, apparently it's not documented anywhere. So you're getting some exclusive information right now. You can actually use the control keys as sort of like a stack mat timer. So if you press down one control key, it doesn't do anything. But if you hold them both down, it's sort of like you have to have both your hands on the stack mat timer. So it sort of makes it feel like you are using a stack mat. And then in order to stop the timer, you can literally press any key on the keyboard. Like I'm going to press seven. And there you go. Pretty useful if you feel like emulating a stack mat. And another thing for if you are using a stack mat timer, I would recommend going into your settings and timer and unchecking this use stack mat status information. So what this does is when you have a stack mat timer connected to CS timer, you can sort of just tap with both your hands, like just tap the timer pads and it'll start your inspection time. Now, in my experience, that doesn't work at all. And the only thing it does is it sometimes just has a false positive and randomly starts the inspection time, but then it sort of like catches itself and then like stops it. And it's really weird and it causes more problems than it's useful for. And usually it doesn't even work. So I would recommend turning that off or maybe try turning it on and see if you can get actual function out of it and maybe mine is just broken. And another recommendation I have is going to your settings, going to timer, and then timer update is, and choosing either none or inspection. So when you're solving, if you have it set to update and you start a solve, see how the timer, it sort of counts up like as you're solving, like normal. Wow, 5.32, that's a new PB, wow. So if you set it to something like seconds instead, it will only update every second. So it's sort of less movement and it's less distracting. And then if you set it to none, then it will not update at all and it'll just say solve. And I personally like this more because I can't help myself from getting distracted by the timer or like glancing up at it and seeing like, oh, I'm doing well, I gotta go fast. And then 
just locking up and getting a terrible solve like that. But um, if you use inspection time, which you can set here, use WCA inspection, you can set always or accept blind. So if you do a lot of blind solves, when your scramble type is set to blind, it will turn off your inspection automatically. But yeah, if you use inspection time and you have the thing set to, what the hell, that's weird. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, so if you have the timer update set to none, it won't uh, give you an inspection countdown either. It'll just say inspect and then uh, it'll be in your ear like eight seconds. So uh, what I always have it set to is uh, inspection. So you still get the inspection countdown, but then once you start solving, you don't get the, uh, the numbers. So yeah, the first time I did that, it actually dropped my solves uh, by a significant amount. So I don't know, maybe just coincidence, but you know, try it and then uh, thank me later, you know? And for my final act, I will show you something outside of CS Timer, but it's still related. So what you're going to want to do is go to export and export your session as a file. And that'll export it as a TXT document. I'm going to save it to my desktop. And then we're going to go to what? What is this? We're going to go to Kuebiko. Kuebiko. Ku the cubicle. <laughs> and we are going to... So you have a few options. You can uh, paste your WCA ID or you can uh, advanced options. You can... Uh, yes. You can choose file and then we're gonna choose that TXT document we exported earlier and then click submit and then we wait. And my session is really big so we will have to wait some time. Am I recording? So. Did you hear about that new uh, GAN Pyraminx with uh, magnets in the core? That's pretty cool. But uh, I'm not I'm not gonna get it because you know I don't I don't want to pay like two hundred dollars for a Pyraminx because I don't do Pyraminx that much. Although I did do some Pyraminx earlier today and I broke my PB single with I think a five or a four. Yeah, a five point three eight. So uh, I'm somewhat of a Timon Kolashinki Ko Kola Koala Kolashinski myself. Uh, and while it's loading, you get some nice uh, nice memes here. You've got uh, solving double X cross every time. Nice, nice. All right, so it's loaded now. And here we see a lot. To be frank, uh, this is quite a lot of information, but I am going to guide you through all of it. So up here, you have all this stuff. So let's first go to my three by three session. So this is a big graph. So you know that that little graph that's in CS timer that I showed you uh, in, the, in the first part of this video? This one right here? Yeah, screw that. We don't need that. We've got cubicle cubing. So with this graph, you can mouse over and the blue line is your average of a thousand and the green line is your average of a hundred and the red points are individual solves. And uh, you can see like the legend over here and uh, you can turn on and off uh, different things here. So now we have a, a dotted red line, which is PB singles and you can double click on it to isolate it. Oh, and then you can double click on it again to show all of them, which <sighs> that literally just looks like someone threw up. Incredible. You can also see the histogram. So. You can see like the time I've gotten the most is a 13 second solve and then second most is 14s and 15s and 12s. And you can see I've gotten seven eight second solves, 42 nine second solves, 277 10 second solves, you know. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. And uh, over here you can uh, see a histogram for just your last 100 solves. And then uh, you can compare that to your PB average of 100. So for my last 100 solves, I got a lot of 12s and 13s, but on my PB average of 100, I got a lot of 12s and 11s and a lot less 13s. So you can sort of see your average times in like a different way. And in the next tab here, you can see your PBs. And I really like this tab. So you can see every PB you've ever had and you can see when you got it and you can see how long it was your PB for. So this nine flat that I had here, that was my PB for 36 days. And you can see that yesterday I had a PB for eight minutes and I broke it 12 solves later. So you can see the number of solves between them here. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. And you can see here that this 11.64 was my PB for 3000 solves, 40 days. 
Yeah. And then you can also see like your PB averages as well. So like average of five or average of a thousand. Uh, the next tab, you can see your top 50 solves ever. So here's all my best solves. Wow, almost all my top 50 solves are sub 10. And then uh, you can see your top 50 averages as well. And then your first sub X. So my first sub 13 average of a thousand was this one. And I've been a sub 13 for 17 days. So yeah, you can see how long it took you to overcome each uh, barrier. Wow, over here, I was like going down every couple of days and then now I'm going months without leveling up. It's a tragedy. So yeah, that's it for these tabs right here. So these are things that you can see like for your individual sessions. It's like my two by two stuff here as well. So yeah, and then up here you have these tabs like your dates histogram. So you can see how much you've been cubing in a certain uh, time period. So in May, I was cubing a lot because that was sort of uh, the peak of quarantine and uh, I was super depressed, you know, just depression cubing. So yeah, and you can see like this big, uh, this big burger here, like you've got your bun here and then your patty and your ketchup and, uh, but yeah, uh, you can see like what proportion of stuff you were doing. So of course I do a lot of three by three and almost nothing else. And then all this green here, that was when I got the MGC 4x4 and suddenly liked 4x4. Here was when I started to try to become color neutral and I stopped. Uh, and you can see like day by day as well. And then uh, month by month and then year by year. So yeah, I've only been using CS timer for like two years. No, one year actually. What the hell did I just do? Stop, stop. Right, okay. Free, free tech tip. I literally just discovered right now while recording this. So you can sort of draw a square and zoom in on a certain part of any graph. So like all these solves here. Oh, okay. So here we can zoom in on like a specific day. And then you can use these tools over here to uh, like, you can click the home to like reset it and things like that. So yeah, and then uh, back to overall PB summary, you can see all of your uh, best times for all of your sessions. So here's pretty much all of my PBs for everything. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, cute. And uh, yeah, so this website is super cool and the developer is a pretty cool guy. I've actually spoken to him before and he really uh, takes what he does seriously. Like I can see he tries his best to make sure this website is as good as it can be. And the same applies for the CS timer devs. Like uh, I haven't spoken to the CS timer devs, but Toppets has. And he said in his comment where he told me about all this stuff that the CS timer dev has actually implemented things just by his own request. So yeah, huge props to these dudes in the cubing community who are making this software that we use and rely on to uh, track what we do. And uh, yeah, huge props to you for making it to the end of the video. So uh, yeah, uh, leave a like and subscribe and uh, huge thanks to Toppets again for giving like pretty much all the information in this video. And if you like the song you're hearing right now, I made it, so go check out my music channel if you're into that. And uh, yeah, see ya.